All right, Tacky Cult Tribe, Rick Hogg from Warhawk Tactical. I've got Jeff Ladmer here, who is one of the competitors. Uh, in this episode of your Tacky Cult Tribe tips, we're going to talk about just some equipment and uh, just some things to think about when you guys are making your selections out there. So I'm going to let Jeff talk about a little bit from the competitor standpoint. I'm going to give you my standpoint from both an operational and from a judge's standpoint from some of the uh, quote-unquote yard sales I've seen of different equipment thrown out the field, and then we'll go from there. So Jeff? Good, thanks. Hey, how's everybody doing today? So, we're gonna talk about some equipment. First, I'm gonna talk about clothing. I wear Atex pants, I like them. They have built-in knee pads that can pop out. That's very important. I also wear the Atex combat shirts. They also have built-in elbow pads, which can pop out also. They're super comfortable. They come in different camo patterns in the IX and the FG. Very light fabrics, it breathes nice. So guys, Again, a couple things, you know, Jeff hit on the pants, right? So this is a key point. There's times when you want your knee pads and there's times when you don't. So I'm not saying for those of you out there that have the regular strap on ones that you're wrong, but I've also seen where they're not very functional. So as you're going through stuff, you catch it on something. Now, next thing you know, your knee pad that you want is down by your ankle. Now you're trying to readjust it and it's just time lost. Um, again, looking at a top. So, you know, in the tactical games, you're going to do some type of, you know, crawling, jumping, climbing, something. So yes, can you wear a t-shirt and be fine? Sure you can. But to me, even when I was operational, I like to have some sleeves on there, because again, these have some elbow pads in there. If you opt to need them, it just gives you some options. So again, we're just trying to get you uh, some food for thought. So Jeff, you wanna talk about your belt next? Great. Belt's also from Atex Camo. It's a, a snake eater tactical belt. It's an integral system. But this goes on your pant loops. You have a pad that's also Velcroed, then onto your, your weapons platform itself, onto the belt. It's a cro clo Cobra clip, clips in, very sturdy. It's somewhat rigid, which is nice. The holster system is made by Burley Man Tactical. This is for my SIG X carry with a TRL light. I run a Atex dump pouch and mesh, which is, I find works for me. It's great to throw my mags, gloves, whatever. I have, I run two AR mags, mag holders, and two SIG mag holders, also made by Burley Man Tactical and Atex. I'm so happy with this belt. It's probably the best thing I've done recently. Yeah, so guys, on belts, right? So I think a couple key points when you're looking at a belt selection. So again, the ability to take it on and off. So for those of you that are in South Carolina doing, uh, ropes and ladders, um, pretty much it was strip your belt. You didn't need it because there was no pistols going in. Again, just a couple things to think about. Yes, Jeff has his set up in a way, and we'll talk about vest, but he's got his, his rifle mag pouches on here. Um, again, you want the option to run them both on your belt if need be, but if you've got to strip them off. So in that case, in South Carolina, it was rifle only. Now you're just pretty much running your plate carrier. Do you have a place to put your mags? So I noticed some guys are shoving them in pockets and other things. Yes, they were getting by, but was it the optimal? I'm not sure. So just, you wanna have a little bit of redundancy built in, but not to the point of, if I don't need it, then I'm just having added weight. So we'll talk about that a little bit with the vest. But again, having the ability to quickly take your belt on and off is actually a great thing. Um, look at your dump pouches as well. Again, to me, a dump pouch has its place, but again, for the games, depending where I'm going, if I'm running through GTI and some of those buildings in there, is this a potential snag hazard? Absolutely. So again, does it make sense to have a depth pouch or not? Just one of those things you've got to figure out. So Jeff, let's hit on the um, the plate carrier. Great. Plate carrier is made by Templar Gear. Um, I love it. It's channeled out on the inside, so it allows a good flow for uh, body heat to escape. What I like about this is the quick on and off. It's just a quick snap and a let Unlike doing the Velcro Macarena of getting a plate carrier back on, I can just unsnap it and snap it. It's got a lot of flex with, with the elastic on the cummerbund. Also, I run three AR pouches on the front. The nice thing about that is if I don't need them, I can just unclip it, these, these uh, clip points right here, and pull it off. And I'm running slick, which is really nice. Also, like Rick, Rick touched on, if all I need is AR, I can ditch my belt and throw these back on and I'm running my mags. I'm not having them in my pocket. I don't risk losing them or not having accountability for them. Yeah, and so again, guys, you know, biggest thing you're looking for, um, 
So last year at the first North Carolina games, we saw a lot of guys come out with their vests and they had all kinds of stuff on there. And I got it. If you're a Mill Ellie guy and you're looking to use the games as some type of shakeout, which I wouldn't recommend, you can do all that stuff on your own. But again, you want to sit there and slick your equipment down as much as possible. Again, for this particular vest, the nice thing, like Jeff was saying, is you got an easy on off for your mag. So if we do throw a snafu, it's like, hey, whip off your belt, I still got a place to put my mag, so that works out. Um, again, one thing on the vest, guys, so you want your vest balanced. So there were some people down there in South Carolina, they were running sand in their vest. So now the problem comes in is your sand's all sitting at the bottom. So the only thing that's doing is just smacking you in the gut. And to me, it's not riding very well. If the only option you have, and, I, and again, I got it guys, I'm not telling you to go out and buy all this Gucci gear and spend all this money, but if you are gonna run sand or something like that in your vest, try to get it in a way where it's positioned equally across in your vest. So whether you buy, um, or you're gonna have to buy, whether you get, let's say, a gallon Ziploc uh, bag, right? And you sit there and take that thing all up so your sand isn't gonna bust and you get it in your vest in a way where it's similar to a plate, I mean, those are options. So again, the whole thing is, things to think about but with all this stuff you guys have to shake it out prior to going so if you're showing up to the games you got your new vest you got your new belt you got your new britches that's when dramas are gonna happen you want to make sure that you shake all this stuff out prior to um, so one thing I'm really gonna harp on and a couple actually we're gonna do this we're gonna do uh, eyes and ears first I'm gonna save gloves for last because I think that's a key point that we need to chat on. So I'm gonna let Jeff talk about kind of some of his stuff um, and we'll go from there. So for eyes, I'm a principles of kiss kind of guy. Keep it simple, stupid. Um, I like the edges. They're very tough, fog resistant, scratch resistant, and they're rubberized. I can bend it. It's not like I'm wearing my Oakley M frames and if I bend them this way, they snap them out, 180 bucks. Very tough glasses. I, Highly recommend them. They work for me. For ears, I'm very low profile when it comes to my gear, and I just wear Surefire Sonic Defenders. They're baffled. If I need to hear something where a judge is talking to me, I just open up the open up the baffle port, and I have clear hearing. When it's time to shoot or start time to go into a battle and compete, I close it and I can rock on. I don't have a large appendage off from the side of my head banging into stuff or possibly being snagged or losing them. So yeah guys, so I brought out the electronic ears for a reason. So again, I like uh, what Jeff's saying with the ears. Again, low profile, that way if I'm manipulating a sling, climbing, doing whatever, I don't have to worry about it because I've seen competitors run where basically their ears are somewhere dangling back here and do I really have good ear, you know, hearing protection? I don't. So again, I'm not saying you can't run your electronic muffs, I'm just saying things to think about. They're hotter in the summertime, Again, they're gonna get banged around, and to me, it's just a little more of a, a snag hazard in there. If you think about this, we know at the games, as I'm coming up to the line, I need to sound off with you know what lane I'm in. So do I really need the best, if you wanna say the, the electronic portion of it, what am I having to hear? You know as I'm coming up there, I should be shouting lane one, lane one, so that I get my time on there. Um, the thing I like about Jeff is if you notice his glasses, what do we got? We got two different colors, right? So again, a clear would be great for something where you know you're going inside GTI and it's darked out. And again, I've got some tint there if I need it. Vice versa, what if weather comes in, now I've got clouds, you can't see that well. So again, I'm not saying you've got to have a multitude of eyes, but just these are things you need to think about. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and while you have a chance, stop by and subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure that you ring that notification bell. If you like the gear that you see on the videos, make sure that you stop by and check out ataxgearstore.com.